Welcome to Automated Flight Week 8, where we will uh, discuss an example starting from a physical system all the way to uh, what a controller would do to the stability of this system and the behavioral properties. So we have a mass held in balance by two springs and a damper, where we have that the mass is two kilos, uh, the spring constants are uh, equal to one, the damping coefficient to five, we apply an external force F in this direction of two newtons and the system is at rest uh, when we start. Uh, well, the first thing we ha do if we have a physical problem, we draw a free body di diagram, we have an axis and we uh, set up the equations of motion. So let's draw our free body di diagram. We have our mass and now we want to see what the effect is of the forces as we displace our mass if and if we were to displace our mass a little to the right in the positive direction the spring spring number two would start pushing from the right to the left and if we move our mass to the right and stretch our spring one it will also start pulling to the left and if we have our damper and move it to the right with any velocity, it will also have a force that way. Now, the force of the springs is proportional to the uh, displacement. So this is equal to K2 times X. This one is K1 times X. And this one is B times the velocity um, because it is damping. We also have a force F that way. And this concludes our free body diagram. And of course, this should um, attach somewhere to the mass, but for my drawing, I've just drawn it there. Now, the third part is, so because now we have a free body di diagram, we have our um, axis set up, we need the equations of motion, and we have that the sum, sum of all the forces equals m times acceleration. Now, we can write out the forces, and let's plug in the values. Um, well, no, let's not. Let's start with um, F minus K1X minus K2X minus B X prime. So these are all the forces. And this equals M times the second derivative of our displacement, because that is our output variable. Uh, that's the one we're interested in. So we'll turn it into a differential equation in X. Now let's fill in, uh, uh, fill in all the coefficients and turn this into one uh, differential equation that we can work with. 2 x prime plus 5, uh, sorry, x double prime plus 5 x prime plus 2 x is equal to f, or equal to, in our case, 2. Now one thing we can do is uh, we can divide this by 2 so that our the coefficient in front of x double prime equals 1 and I'll show you why that is uh, convenient because now we can also see um, if we can determine uh, the properties of this system namely two properties the damping coefficient and the natural frequency of the system uh, which is the frequency of the system if there is no damping we know that if we have a second order system with these two parameters, we can write it as x double prime plus two zeta omega n x prime plus omega n squared times x equals some input. And if we match this form onto this form, we can easily see that um, omega n squared has to be equal to uh, one. So omega n is equal to one. And we can then see that zeta is equal to 5 over 4 uh, because of this 2 here. So we know the properties of our system now. Uh, we want to solve this system. And the way we're going to do that now is to take the Laplace transform, um, solve the La uh, x in the Laplace domain, take the inverse Laplace transform and see what we get. So let's take the Laplace transform here we get 1 plus 5, uh, sorry, we get s squared plus 5 over 2s plus 1 times x is equal to 1 over s. Now we want to isolate x and we find x 
is equal to um, 1 over s times s squared plus 5 over 2s plus 1. This is x of s. So we've uh, solved the uh, differential equation in the Laplace domain. Now, well, not really. We, we now have to get um, uh, to using partial uh, fraction expansion to, to really solve this, but I did want to take an intermediate step. This is the Laplace transform of our input. And I want to have the transfer function of our system, which is xs over fs, so the output in the, Laplace, uh, in the s domain over the input. And in our case, that is 1 over s squared plus 5 over 2s plus 1. And the stability of our system is determined by the two poles of uh, this transfer function, which happen to lie both on the negative real axis at minus a half and minus 2. Those are the roots of this second order polynomial, which we can derive by the ABC formula, which I will omit for now. So we know it's an overdamped system, and uh, we know that the um, Laplace transform of our solution is equal to this. But if we have that x of s is 1 over s, well, we know how to factorize this part because that is s plus a half times s plus 2. We know that this must equal 1 a over s plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus a half. And if we do all the calculations, we will find that a is equal to 1, b is equal to uh, 1 third, and c is equal to minus 4 over 3, giving us our solution. And if we take the uh, inverse Laplace transform, we get x of t is equal to, well, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is equal to 1, plus 1 over 3 e to the power of minus 2t, minus 4 over 3 e to the power of minus 1 half t. And we see that indeed it's an overdamped system, uh, there are no oscillations, and the solution looks a bit like this uh, in t. So we've gone from our physical system to the solution. Well, let's say that this uh, does not have the properties we desire uh, and we want to add a controller. Well, let's, let's do that. I'll uh, erase this and then we can have a look at our controller. So we will be looking at a proportional controller, uh, which is a subsystem of a PID controller um, pretty much the easiest part. It's why we like to use it in examples. But what do we have? We have a reference value. We have a some kind of controller. We have our system. And we have our output, which in our case is the displacement. And we feed this back uh, so that we have an error signal here. And in our case, we have a G of S, and let's just go back to the original uh, system, which was 1 over 2 S squared plus 5 S uh, plus 2. So we have our mass, our spring, and our damper coefficients. So this is our system G of S. And our controller, C of S, is simply some K P some gain and it, it basically if we have a certain error the proportional controller uh, multiplies that error by a constant uh, to get a bigger input into our system. Now if we have our control loop we know that the closed loop transfer function is equal to cs times gs over 1 plus c s times g s and as you saw in the calculations before uh, we can 
uh, write that all out, play around with the fractions, but in this case I'll just simply write out the solution, which is kp over uh, 2s squared plus 5s plus 2 plus kp. And what we want to do is see the effects of different values of kp on the location of these poles. Now, uh, because of course I didn't memorize them, I have them here. Um, so, what we want to do is look at different values of kp, the resulting transfer function, and the two poles. Um, did I leave myself enough space here? Well, we'll see. For values of 1, 2, and 3, and we already know the situation where we don't have a feedback loop and we don't have a controller, the two poles are there. Well, let's see what happens if we increase the gain. Well, if kp is equal to 1, what we will get here is uh, 1 over 2s squared plus 5s plus 3. And our new poles will lie at minus 1 and minus 3 over 2. So in the next step, um, if this is 1, and so we'll see that in the first iteration, they move closer to each other. All right, if we take k is 2, we'll get a 1 over 2s squared plus 5s plus 4. I can also write this, uh, sorry, this has to be a 2. And the last step is 3 over 2s squared plus 5s plus 5. And if we look at the locations of the poles, they will be minus 5 over 4 plus j times the square root of 7 over 4. And of course then this will be its uh, complex conjugate. And they lie, let's take another color. Um, they lie about here and there. And finally, if we take a, an even larger value of uh, kp, we'll get minus 5 over 4 plus j times the square root of 15 over 4 and minus 5 over 4 minus j times the square root of 15 over 4. And if we increase uh, the value of k, simply this value will increase. So if we look at the final position of, well, the, the, the last value here, uh, this is of course uh, uh, only a bit of a guess. What we see is that the poles move that way. And here this pole moves that way. And this graph we knew was the root locus plot. So if we, um, want to see the effect of uh, this particular ah, this particular type of control on this system well we see that for low values of k they move slightly together there is a value of k in between 1 and 2 where the, uh, the poles collapse into 1 namely five, minus 5 over 4 so we know that they collapse somewhere uh, onto each other but if we then keep increasing the, uh, the proportional gain, um, we won't get a faster decaying system. The only thing we get is a, a faster and faster oscillation. And if we uh, wanted a, a specific damping ratio, so we know that damping ratios fall, the, uh, identical damping ratios fall on uh, lines of a constant angle, um, if we wanted a specific damping ratio or we wanted a certain limit on natural frequencies, we can now choose our gain to match our design requirements. So from a physical system to the properties of a uh, proportional controller, basically we've covered uh, most of uh, everything we've learned so far in automated flight. Thank you.